Snow Tracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha revs your heart. And by FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. On last week's episode, Vern and I explored the Lewis Hills area of the west coast of Newfoundland with Dustin Boyd, who was last season's North America's top snowmobiler winner, and with Craig Borden from Rugged Edge. The plan for our second day riding here in Newfoundland was to stick mostly to trails, but in a different area down sort of along the edges of the Grossmore National Park, there's a really cool snowmobile destination down there called the Jack Ladder. This is like the hub of snowmobiling for this part of Newfoundland. Everybody comes here. I gotta say, Jeff, the owner of Jack Ladders, got it all figured out from a snowmobile perspective. He's got gas, he's got food, he's got lodging, beautiful cabins. When you walk in the cabin, it's one of the coolest features. He actually has a drying closet. Put your gear in the closet, crank up the heat and all that stuff. In the morning, your gear is perfectly dry, toasty warm. Jack Ladders got it figured out for people that are, are diehard snowmobilers. They definitely take care of your needs. The second day, we met up with Bob and Tony from the Newfoundland Snowmobile Federation and bring the guys down to Grossmore, let them see some area in Woody Point. Watching dirt tracks in the summertime, it made me realize that, hey, this would be great if we could get the guys from snow tracks there this winter and, and show them what we have to offer. I mean, and their whole viewing audience would be able to see Newfoundland and, and what we can showcase when it comes to being a snowmobiler. It has been excellent to be able to bring Luke and Vern in and showcase the province and what we have to offer here for snowmobiling. So leaving the jack ladder, we headed down towards Woody Point, had the opportunity to go through a small section of Grossmore National Park. There are some avenues in that in the, in the park that you can access with snowmobiles. The park is very limited, but I mean, it does give you the opportunity. In uh, the last couple of years, we've tried to operate more closely with tourism operators. There's a number of organizations that we try to work fairly close with, and this is really developing the snowmobile industry here in Newfoundland. We think that it has a huge potential for growth. So much to offer here, we believe that it's not available anywhere else. Newfoundlanders were always notorious for being very proud of where they come from, you know. It's uh, normally humble people, we're very accommodating. We love snowmobiling, we love the outdoors, we have a lot to offer. It's easy to see that a lot of tour guides are, are becoming operational, a lot of hotels. People are really starting to gear their businesses towards the snowmobiling industry. Uh, the Newfoundland Labrador Snowmobile Federation operates approximately 3,500 kilometers of trails right across the island from St. Anthony to Clarenville to the St. George's area. Our plan was to uh, meet up with Terry Young, uh, Greg Pike and Greg Osmond, all from the Woody Point area and explore the trails down there. So on the trail ride, we're gonna be meeting up with a couple other folks to sort of uh, show us along the way to Woody Point. And uh, one of them was Terry with Fallen Bay Recreation and the other one was Greg from Arctic Quest. And these guys own uh, two dealerships that are literally about a kilometer apart. Most dealers work together. They offer assistance to each other. As far as it goes, approximately, there's always a dealer near boss, so you would never have to worry about traveling hours to the dealer. If you came here and had a mechanical issue, there's always dealers. You would usually want a half hour, 45 minutes apart. Probably the most impressive thing about the trails here is the scenery. As we were coming around this one hill, it was this really, really steep hill we were climbing up, all of a sudden the whole vista opened up, and there was the bay. It almost took my breath away. It was like, whoa, where did that come from? The trail going out to Woody Point was breathtaking. 
see some of the beautiful scenery that I've, me as a Newfoundlander, have never seen in my own backyard. It was absolutely beautiful. In my uh, position with the Newfoundland Labrador Snowmobile Federation, I've uh, got to travel around and I've met a lot of people that are involved in the snowmobile industry. And quite often they don't realize how easy it is to get to Newfoundland and what we have to offer. And the scenery here in Newfoundland I think is unparalleled anywhere else in Canada or the United States. And I gotta tell you, it was absolutely spectacular. You can't experience snowmobiling in Newfoundland without being able to, to go out to an area like that. This is what you can experience almost anywhere in the province. And I think that, that was really, really cool to be able to sort of experience that in Newfoundland. It's not just about trails here. The trails are why we come. If, if you don't have good trails, I don't want to ride there. But the trails here are complemented by unreal scenery, unreal views and vistas. And that's just, I just don't think you can duplicate that anywhere else in the world. As we're coming along the, the, the trail, uh, our destination was uh, Woody Point to be able to go down to a, a smaller restaurant called uh, Merchant Warehouse, where they were gonna fire up the grills and, and fryers and treat us to a, a great Newfoundland lunch. We had lunch at, at this place called Merchant Warehouse in Woody Point. It's only technically open in the summer. If you call her, she will open up in the winter for you as a snowmobile. She'll come in just to make you lunch. Hey, Luke, this is uh, Greg Osmond, who's mayor of Woody uh, Point. Greg, hi, Luke, pleasure to meet you. You as well. This is Vern. Hi, Vern, how you doing? Greg, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, I'm the mayor, because uh, you really can't get anybody to take the job, right? So, uh, <laughs> so. If you're in Newfoundland, the one thing you have to have is you have to have fish and chips. And when, when they say fish in Newfoundland, they need cod. And when you eat cod in Newfoundland, it's some of the best fish that you're ever gonna experience. And uh, just the hospitality overall uh, for this province is incredible. From the folks that you meet on the trail, through to the people at the lodges, through to the people at the restaurants, they're always there with open arms welcoming you. And you're never gonna find a better place, I can honestly say in the world, because we've traveled a lot, where people are more welcoming and accommodating and, and lovely than the people of Newfoundland. You know, what I found really interesting is after speaking with Bob and Tony from the Federation, is that this province has about 3,500 kilometers of trails, and this goes province-wide. But what is unique about Newfoundland, pretty much anywhere in the province, you can go and ride. The 3,500 kilometers of trails that they have are basically just sort of like little access points that allow you to sort of gain access to some awesome backcountry. Maybe it's just to some awesome vistas. So within Newfoundland and our trail network, I mean, our trail network runs through a, a variety of different country and, and different landscape. And I mean, it just gives you access, like play all day in the snow and there's nothing better in the evening. When you come back out and it's getting dark and you're tired, to get out on the trail and say, wow, this is groomed, it's smooth. I'm gonna have a nice ride home. Each club puts in literally thousands and thousands of hours every year in doing trail maintenance, in putting up signage, and making sure that our visitors, that our people are using the trails, it's safe, they have a great experience. It was, it was great to come out and see that, that aspect of riding. Well, normally, me and my friends, if we come to the west coast of Newfoundland, we, we basically dedicate our time to backcountry riding. But being able to see those beautiful trails and how comfortable it is and how accommodating everybody is and just how nice it is, uh, I'm definitely going to spend more time dedicated to trail riding, bring my family out. When we finished our trail ride day, we ended up back, obviously, at, at Jack Ladder at our cabin, unloaded our stuff, got changed, got cleaned up, and then went into Jack Ladder to have some food. For our last night here in Newfoundland uh, at the Jack Ladder, we were told that we were going to experience an authentic kitchen party. What is a kitchen party? Where everyone sort of comes together, they bring out food that you can share, you toast for a great day, enjoy the bevies, enjoy the conversations and all stuff. Dustin, he wants to say he made a bit of a mistake by telling me that he plays the guitar and the mandolin. 
I went over to uh, to Jeff and I said, listen, if you're looking for someone that knows how to play, you got to ask Dustin to get up on the stage. Dustin happily obliged, got up on stage, and I got to tell you, he didn't disappoint. He was amazing. He gets up there and plays a whole set off the top of his head, no plans, just out of his memory. It's ridiculous. It was the best time. It was so good. People in the bar were having a ball. They, they loved that this random dude got up on stage and was entertaining them. Yeah, she says, baby. I'm the North America's next on snowmobiler. He's the American Idol. The one thing that uh, I've learned is that when you come to Newfoundland, set your expectations high because they will over deliver on almost everything. As in the past, we've showed you lots of different landscapes and scenery, and you guys got to take in. But mostly I'm proud was our hospitality. I think it's the hospitality and your friends. You guys came here, you made friends with many more Newfoundlanders. Judging by the comments that I, that I heard yesterday and the, the giggles and laughs and the, and the old wows, uh, I, I think you guys will be back, which is, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It was a great end to a great trip. You couldn't ask for a better experience overall from the off-trail riding we did, the on-trail riding that we did, the people we met, the places we stayed. Everything about this trip was, as Vern put it, well above any kind of expectations you might have. It's one I'm gonna remember forever, and it's one I'm gonna try and duplicate again next year when snow conditions are a little more normal and I can get even more stuck. Good night, everybody, that's all we got. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. It's no surprise that FXR and Snow Tracks kind of go hand in hand. We go back a long ways to the point when Milt first started doing FXR stuff, and my dad and him at Super Tracks worked together. This year, we're going to their dealer show again. We always go to their dealer show because we love seeing the new product. This is kind of a cool one because it represents 25 years of FXR. And so we're here in Quebec City and they're holding it in a castle. FXR has been a loyal partner with Snow Tracks and Super Tracks for countless years. We use their gear 12 months of the year on dirt tracks as well, and we're always excited to see just what they have in store for us year to year. We know it will be the most innovative, safe, and always styled ahead of the competition. And to help us dive deeper into what's new and interesting is Matt Ham, a 15-year veteran at FXR. 25 years is, uh, that's a pretty major milestone. And I mean, from what started as an idea that uh, Milt, the owner had, being a snowmobile racer and a dealership owner, FXR started by him making his own custom race gear. They're using materials and stuff that was lighter weight. He'd be on the starting line and he'd be looking at people that had the big heavy snowmobile suits on him. And they're looking at him like he's crazy and he's gonna freeze but halfway through the race, he's still charging because he wasn't sweating and he wasn't as heavy and he wasn't bogged down, you know? And so that was, that was the start of it all, you know? Since I've started at FXR, which was about 15 years ago, the company has literally grown 70 times itself. You can't even imagine that kind of a growth curve just in terms of, you know, staffing, logistics, financing, like production, all the challenges of, of a small business and especially with FXR being independently owned, you know, those challenges are more and more real. And so just staying ahead of that all is, it takes a big team and a lot of really good people to make that all work. So technology is huge for FXR. Everybody knows FXR for like the colors and the styles and the graphics, but you know, you don't realize how much technology goes into all of our pieces. And a lot of our FXR technology has actually been developed in house in terms of what are we doing that's specific for snowmobilers or what works, you know, in cold weather versus in warm weather in the summertime to, to still stay breathable. You know, some of our key technology pieces, of course, fast flotation insulation. The big, single biggest thing that drives our sales and, and it's so important for the market. You know, we do it in so many of our men's pieces and our women's pieces. All of our kids' outerwear has fast flotation. You have a responsibility to get home to your wife or to your family. You know, you got to think about that when you're out riding or you want to protect your family because you're all out riding together, you know? So whether that's, you know, having the mom or the kids in fast gear, like you wouldn't go riding in the mountains without an Abbey path. You know, why would you do that? It's so dangerous. Tiny Tim here doesn't, yeah. uh, doesn't think. So this is our new Maverick Electric. And so you can see the soft case battery pack, which goes in behind that strap. So again, it's gonna keep it a little more low profile against the side of the helmet. The typical for the industry is to have a big plastic pack on the side that's pretty square edge profile. Yeah. Catches branches if you're backcountry riding. Branches or even just to wipe out into the snow yeah, when yeah. you hit something hard, that's right? Great. So so we've got the cord nicely tucked away under the strap so that it can't snag. 
You got the external button, press and go. Nice. And then, uh, and then you're riding with clear vision, you know. And the battery pack inside of here is the same battery pack that you put inside of a glove. So you can yep. literally run this all day long with a couple batteries in your pocket yeah. and not worry about fog ever, or you can just turn it on and off when you I need it. I mean, the great thing is even if you run out of batteries and you don't have spares, and you can still plug it into the sled on your oh, 12 volt so hookup. Oh, so it 12 volt RCA? Yep. Okay, yep. cool. You have a few options. No nice. matter what, you can still get home with uh, with heated lens, no cool. matter how much you're huffing and puffing. So we've got this brand new category, uh, Ride Tech is what we're calling it. And it's sort of like a hybrid crossover between ski and snowboard and snowmobile, which you see really sets, you know, some of these pieces apart. It's not the big flash. It's not the big logo. It's not yeah. the big billboard. This is a kind of a cleaner, subtler look. Yeah. It's going to help connect with those customers that are either, you know, I think, I think we'll have a lot of people that are going to be on the hills with this. Yep. And I think we're going to have a lot of snowmobilers that are going to even want to wear this as their their winter jacket, you know, for like sure. for it. Yeah, it's very subtle, very quiet. It's all made to sort of mix and match and give opportunities for whether you're into color or you like some of the new canvas stuff. You know, for ski and snowboard, it's a little bit of a longer cut because it's more of a stand-up style. It just lets our FX, our customer, start to get into that right piece that kind of fits in in a different market other than just snowmobiling, you know. it's And that could be for new customers that are coming to the FXR brand or it could be for existing customers that feel like they're ready for a different look that's uh, unique and independent from something they've had in the past. FXR is cutting edge. Their products speak for themselves. And with more years of use than I can even remember, we trust FXR to deliver the highest quality, the best performance, and the coolest new looks. It's been 25 years, and here's to 25 more with a company who's never forgot who they are or where they come from. The other day at our weekly family dinner, Mark and I got talking about snow bikes and snowmobiles and their inherent strengths and weaknesses. At the end of the conversation, I suggested we do an entirely unscientific test and spice things up with a friendly wager. Mark's gonna ride our Yamaha SRX and I'm gonna ride our Yamaha YZ450 FX snow bike. We're gonna leave from the start of the Snow Tracks TV's top secret test trail, ride to a bridge at the halfway point, turn around and come all the way back. The last one back has to buy lunch for the winner at the local establishment of their choice. To make things more fun and infinitely more interesting though, there are two rules that must be followed. First, Mark must stay on the trail and maintain reasonable trail speeds. And second, I must stay off the trail and can only cross it at a 90 degree angle if absolutely necessary. So Luke's already let you in on what we're doing here. It's kind of a friendly little uh, comparo between a snowmobile and a snow bike. And of course, whenever the Lester guys get together, there's pretty strong opinions expressed. I think probably I'm gonna end up back here a little bit ahead of him because the YZ450FX I'm riding with the snow bike kit allows me to go, you know, basically as the crow flies from A to B. I don't have to zigzag through the trees the way a snowmobile does. So my opinion is that my course is actually a lot shorter than his, and that should make up for the difference in speed that I have on a snow bike. But I'm just gonna keep it to myself that the Sidewinder's got 200 horsepower and the snow bike has 45. So I think that Luke's gonna be buying the grilled cheese and soup at the end of the day. I know we're probably gonna get some flack for this after this story airs because this is not scientific, but the reality is it's not supposed to be. It wasn't about the numbers. It's not about recording, you know, finishing times and things like that. This is just supposed to be fun. Mark and I love riding, we love riding together. So it's just a chance for us to get out and goof around and, and have some fun, really. So when we took off on the lake and it was go time, I unloaded all 200 horsepower of that big SRX on Luke. Man, there was no way that 45 horsepower out of a motocross bike and a snow bike combination was going to, uh, was going to rain over the SRX. I had them where I wanted them right away. So this friendly little contest started to get serious when I pulled onto the trail, was going down the trail, and all of a sudden there's Luke crossing the trail in front of me. I had no idea that he had made up that much time for me on the lake. So I got thinking, hmm, this could get serious. I need a grilled cheese and fries. When I first took off and saw Mark rocket ahead of me, I thought, crap, I'm gonna have to make up some time. But I was pretty confident that once I got the snow bike into the woods, I'd be able to make up huge time. Unfortunately, I kind of forgot how tight the woods can be and how it can slow you down when you get to spots that you can't get over or a tree line that you can't actually ride through. Once I got moving a little further through the woods and came out onto the marshes though, that's when I knew things were gonna pick up. And I was confident I'd be able to make up huge time. The marshes are just wide open. They look like fields really. And once I got on there, got into fourth gear and just sat back on the seat and ripped, 
I was making up time like crazy. And, and I figured by the time I got to the bridge, Mark would be somewhere behind me. I was being good to what we talked about. There was no excessive speed being involved in this. And at the turnaround point, I knew I had Luke because I couldn't see any tracks from him being there before me. So I turned around and got on with business and started to head back to our starting point that we agreed would be the finish line. Yeah, that's where we were headed. I need to get moving. So there was another route back that I could take that was gonna take me across even more marshes so I could keep the speed up even higher. And that was what I rocketed for and didn't look back. This is like a walk in the park. I get that a snow bike is a lot of fun, but I think a snowmobile's got a lot more versatility and is just as much, if not more fun. Luckily on the way back, I didn't get stopped by anything in my way, any tree lines or any, any weird rock outcroppings or anything like that. I was able to just rip. So it was actually a ton of fun. And I think for me, that's what the snow bike is all about. It's that, yeah, it might not be the fastest way to get through the woods, but it's definitely the most fun way. When I pulled back out on the lake and Luke was nowhere in sight, I knew I had him where I wanted him. It was time for grilled cheese and soup. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles, MBRP Performance Exhaust, Race Inspired, Trail Proven, and by Hercules Tire, Ride on Our Strength. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.